You've just been breached or threatened with a cyber attack, and now comes a new demand. Pay up or it's only going to get worse. Extortion threats like these are not new. What is new is that they've become the norm rather than the exception for a number of cyber criminal groups. I'm InfoSec Skills author John Wagnon, and in this video, I'm going to walk through how extortion is being adopted by cyber criminals. I'm going to tell you a real life story about a series of attempted extortion attacks against a group of financial institutions. Cybercrime can be monetized in a variety of ways, but extorting victims directly is often the simplest and most scalable form of attack. Over the past few years, we've seen extortion being added to all types of attack. Even ransomware actors, which by their nature are extortionists, are now performing double extortion attacks, pay up to regain access to your encrypted files and do it by a certain date or will also sell or publicly release all the stolen data. And it's not just organizations who are being extorted. Cyber criminals may contact individuals who've had sensitive data stolen and pose a similar threat. Pay me a fee or I'll release your stolen data to your family, your friends, social networks. And when it's health data, financial data, or data from other thought to be private websites, these types of messages can be particularly effective. Sometimes cyber criminals attempt extortion with the threat of doing something in the future, as is the case with some DDoS extortion attacks. Let me tell you about one such case involving a number of financial institutions. Several financial institutions in Asia Pacific received notes from an attacker group that was posing as a different, very well-known attacker group. The notes each told these companies to pay money or else they would launch attacks against them. And then they launched attacks, a scaled down attack at several companies to prove their point. The companies got very nervous and some decided to pay while others decided to harden their defenses and stop the attack. Meanwhile, other financial companies who had not yet received these notes also got nervous because they might be next. The attackers used a botnet to launch a host of amplification attacks against these victim websites. And the peak volume was about 50 gigabits per second, which was large enough to consume the resources of these victim sites. So the way that they launched these attacks is they used open DNS and NTP and CLDAP and SSDP and those types of servers on the internet that ride on the UDP protocol or the Uniform Datagram Protocol, which is a connection-less oriented protocol. That means that the sender and the receiver don't establish a connection, but rather the sender just sends the data and hopes that the receiver gets it. But what's, what this does is it opens the door for attackers to use that, that underlying protocol to launch DDoS amplification attacks. And in these cases, uh, use, use servers like DNS and NTP and CLDAP and SSDP. And what the attackers would do is find these open servers on the internet and they would send small requests to these servers and they would spoof the sender's IP address and make it look like the victim sites were the ones that were sending these requests. And then these vulnerable servers would then respond with the responses, but they would respond to the victim websites. And so the net effect of this is that a flood of information hits these victim websites where they never asked for the, uh, the information to begin with. But that's the nature of how these attackers uh, launch this attack. And when you have a botnet that has thousands and maybe even millions of computers all sending requests all at the same time, and then the responses are very, very large responses from each of those requests, then it really saturates the, uh, the bandwidth of these victim websites and they just can't keep up. So the mitigation for this was to block the UDP ports for those specific services at the edge firewalls. Another thing that these attackers used is an HTTPS GET flood. Um, and the nature of this portion of the attack was to have this same botnet hit a specific logon URL and consume the ability for legitimate users to log into that same URL. And so many companies used uh, security features like rate limiting to limit the number of logons to that specific URL. So in rate limiting, you at the edge security device, you essentially say, hey, you can only have this many uh, you know, attempts or users in a certain period of time. And so then that limits the attackers from being able to, to exploit that specific URL during a certain period of time. 
And so as the attack unfolded, the real attacker group found out about all this and they didn't like the fact that someone else was launching attacks using their name. So they pointed at the posing attacker group that was doing the attack and they started attacking them and they ended up shutting them down and stopping the attack. So you can see these attacks are serious. It's important to understand how the attacks work and how you can mitigate them. Check out my InfoSec Skills Learning Path for more information on common attacks and how you can protect against them.